Nick White with Airgun Adventure Productions here and today we're going to talk a little bit about terminal ballistics and on that subject I've brought in Mr. Cottle here today to educate us both a little bit on that and hopefully enlighten us on the subject. Carl? Thank you Nick. Today as he mentioned terminal ballistics. Got 38 years of experience in this I'm going to try and keep it straightforward and to the point. So I'm just going to kind of hit the, the high points as it pertains to the modern pneumatic air rifle because the not modern pneumatic air rifle has reduced energy. So we need to talk first about a target medium aka animals, how an animal is put together, how it works and what actually constitutes a terminal event. Um, the normal vernacular would be death. At what point do you harvest an animal and it dies? We want this to be safe and humane. So what a termination event is, is at the point that it simply dies. Now death occurs naturally in a chain of events and it occurs by disease or what have you. But in our case, we're going to work specifically with damage inflicted because anything or anybody can in inflict enough damage to which something dies. Death is the natural part. The damage that's incurred is not the natural part. In this particular case, we're talking about bullets and how bullets work in flesh. So on animals, you have a hide or a leather outside. You have uh, a muscular structure, the meat, if you will, and it lays much, much like these fingers lay. And th this is really important is to know how muscles are laid in there. And then of course you have your fluids and you have your vital organs, which are used to push blood around because it is in fact a pressurized unit and it has to be pressurized. You yourself are pressurized. I'm pressurized. If I watch the news, sometimes a little more than, than I should be. But anyway, I digress back to it. So your muscles lay like this. We And behind the muscles, we have our main organs that are used to push the blood, which carry the oxygen. You have nerves and nerve endings, which carry the instructions to the major organs, which all come from the brain. Now, at what point that we damage these things or we interrupt the information through the nerves that cause things to stop is when death occurs and we're doing this with a bullet. So when a bullet, and I'm just going to grab one here, copper bullet, when it enters in through the skin, it goes in. Now ideally you want this bullet to expand to at least twice its diameter because you need to have something called a permanent wound cavity and that's important going forward. You need to know permanent wound cavity. I uh, can't talk without a board. So if you've got this is the exterior of an animal and you have a permanent wound cavity. This is the point at which it cannot heal through elasticity. It cannot come back. It is in fact permanent. Forgive the airplane. Temporary wound cavity is what you see a lot in the ballistic gelatins and it, it's kind of dramatic as it were because what it does is it's a splash. It's called a hydrodynamic shock. So based on the projectile's speed and its diameter, it creates a shock wave much like throwing wa a rock in water. And this shock wave, what it does is it spreads out. Now here's where the muscle's important. As it spreads, it spreads the muscles apart. As the muscles come apart, blood flows through the muscles. It creates a blood loss. For those of you that have harvested animals, we call that bloodshot. It's actually a temporary situation where unless it expands to the point that it tears, it comes back into the elastic nature of flesh. So when a projectile hits the animal, it tears a hole, creates a temporary wound cavity, and then it has a permanent wound cavity or channel depending upon which school of ballistics that you went to. Now this causes bleeding, but it doesn't generally come outside the skin unless you tear the skin. It's just a huge bloodshot bruise. The permanent cavity, that's where your blood loss occurs. Blood loss means a lack of oxygen. When it also means that the interruption of electrical impulses, which can occur through the hydrodynamic shock because it blows up the ends of the nerves. So in order to safely and humanely harvest an animal, you need to damage it so quickly in a vital spot that the vital organs turn off, lack of blood flow, you stop the electrical impulses so that the animal succumbs to death 
quickly so that it's safe and humane. And I mean, this can happen very fast, as in at the speed to which they just simply fall down and they've already had a terminal event before they've hit the ground. Other times they run for a ways. It depends on where the damage occurs. We want to have our projectiles. These are actually projectiles recovered from animals. So what this is, is it has expanded. You'll know it's expanded. Both of these has expanded. Now these are copper with lead cores. Now, this is important. We've spent hundreds of years trying to improve beyond lead. Why lead? Well, because it was cheaper and easier to find than gold. Gold would be excellent for it. However, digress. With the copper, we can control how much the bullet expands and where it expands. We can control how far the bullets will go into the target medium before it goes into what they call a yaw or an upset to where it creates additional damage on the inside. If you hit bones and stuff, you can end up with secondary missiles that also will go in and cause damage. The problem occurs is when you don't have enough mass, you can't control the expansion, so you have mass and velocity. Well, with the modern pneumatic air rifle, our velocities are down. They're not the same. But in order to control it, we need to get bullets. Now, fortunately, subsonic ammunition. Modern pneumatic rifles are pretty close to subsonic ammunition. You can buy subsonic ammunition. I seem to have left my phone uh, outside of this taping right here. But you can actually Google subsonic ammunition or subsonic bullets for the 458 SOCOM or the 458, and you'll find a number of companies that have come up with this. That means that they've already worked out what the penetration should be. I personally feel it should be about 18 inches. If you need to be able to get 18 inches on an animal, uh, I know in Africa Nick was saying that they wanted 14 inches. Either way, it's in that ballpark and that will work. So you have to have enough mass to have momentum. You have to have enough velocity to get through. That's important. If you don't know what your gun does, you need to put a conograph on it. You need to test it so that you can find out what it does. Now, what states do is they set a bullet weight and a velocity, and that's how they determine foot pounds of energy. Now, this foot pounds of energy is interesting, but it's foot pounds of energy based on a surface area. So like in the state of Washington, you have to have a six millimeter bullet at 100 grain. It has to have 900 foot pounds at 100 yards. And that's what they consider safe and humane to harvest deer. You can figure out what that is. You can go out online, download a calculator for deer and elk with a modern pneumatic sporting rifle. I know I was part of a, a, an effort in Idaho where we had to have several hundred foot-pounds of energy at a given distance. All this is calculatable. And the modern rifle will do this efficiently provided you use copper jacketed bullets so that you can get the penetration and you can get controlled expansion. And that's what we're promoting here is the use of copper jacketed bullets because you're going to get the terminal effect you want. Just simply poking a hole in lead, shaping it slightly different, it's still just plain soft lead. There's a reason why these bullet manufacturers, and there are hundreds of them that are doing an amazing job, come up with this stuff. And we need to utilize this for the modern air rifle. Given the energy limitations of a pneumatically operated rifle, it has been almost impossible to get a pneumatic sporting rifle to efficiently utilize copper bullets until Airgun Adventure. Remember that unless you want your bullet to act like a solid, you must choose a bullet that is suited for your application or you will experience failures. Choose the right bullet for proper expansion and penetration.